Greetings, all you up and coming villains out there. I'm Deuce Disden, coming at you with another My Hero Academia chapter review. This time it's chapter 227, titled Sleepy. I love this cover shot of Himiki Toga as it just it just shows the kind of unhinged but still cute loving nature that she has deep down. It especially just goes to show you just how much of a popular character Toga has become in terms of the My Hero landscape. I mean she was popular from like Jump, but just with every chapter she appears in, her popularity just continues to skyrocket more and more. Although she still hasn't made her way into like the top 10 characters, so I also kind of have to wonder if that's just Horikoshi's point of view, as he just really loves the character or what. But I'm getting way way off topic. Our chapter begins with Toga collapsing in a shed, you know, just remotely where nobody can really find her. And she's kind of just run out of strength. You know, the detonation of the blood she in took in real, really messed her up. She's starting to lose some blood, but she actually kind of takes solace in this. And she feels like um, in losing blood, as being beaten, bloody, and damaged as she is, she feels like she can get closer to the people she admires. You know, that, that worked her perspective where she just loves people who are covered in blood. She admires those people to a certain degree. And I feel like we still need some time to truly understand Toga's mentality to a certain extent. Maybe we will, never truly will. But one person feels like he truly understands what happened with to Himiki Toga. And that is Reed Destro. As he actually says that ultimately she lived in her own little world she still lives in her own little world while people will call her abnormal a villain but it's society's rules and laws that made her that way because of the nature of her quirk you know, they say that they apply the rules and regulations to her. And it's because of that, you know, it made a society where if anyone breaks that mold of perceived normalcy, then they are perceived as a villain. But ultimately, she was just following her innate instincts because of a gift that she had no choice in being given, which creates a very interesting talking point in terms of you know biology and our natural perceptions of how we feel you know it, it really does uh, I feel like there are real world applications here but it feels dubious at best to go into them but Reed Destro goes on to say that you know curious you know fell wanting to show use this girl to prove that our, the society that they live in, the quirk-based superhuman society that they live in, was inherently flawed in the way that it acts. Which isn't wrong, it's not you know, completely off, but Tomoyasu uh, Chikozuku uh, comes in you know, reaffirming that Curious did in fact die. She, She's dead. I mean, once you, you go up like five stories and your head hits the pavement, you, you're probably going to die. The human body is a little more fragile than most people like to think, but... You know, I am also saddened by Curious's death. She felt like someone I would have liked to have had around a little bit more just because of the nature of her character, but... C'est la vie. Um, but, you know, Reed Destro ultimately, you know, while... Tomoyasu is ultimately only saddened because he found Curious to be a valuable asset with her connections and her talent for media and all that. Reed Destru is more saddened by the fact that he actually valued her as a soldier for the Liberation Army. You know, it was a human life that he took value in because she was part of the, you know, meta-human world that they live in. But Tomoyasu is very dismissive. 
um, saying that he won't be able to use any of the footage of Curious because her defeat completely washes away the purpose of her showdown with Toga. You know, you know, Toga would have played the tragic heroine who was taken down because of, the, like, a rabid dog because of their society, but. Ultimately, it does nothing but bolster Toga's image, which I feel that ultimately that imagery will be put out there into the world just to show off the might of the, you know, League of Villains. So I feel that that will ultimately come into play later down the line. But Giren actually kind of questions what they're doing with footage. Why would they go through the trouble of recording all of this? Which is ultimately fairly obvious. And while Tomoyasu also feels that that's obvious, he does still take the time to just explain everything. You know, this is the guy in charge of that media empire, you know, electronics and all that good stuff. As he says that, you know, Pete... They're using the surveillance system to record the battle of citizens protecting their town from heroes, uh, from evil villains, basically, as a way of showing that, you know, more freedom given to superpowers is the right course of action. So they're basically spinning this news story into their own favor, despite the fact that they're the ones who provoke the League of Villains, which is ultimately a very political move honestly but gear is just like like if you think that he doesn't quite buy into it because he's just like well that that shouldn't be what changes the world but that's the thing about our society as a whole whether it be a superhuman one or the real world one people will buy into damn near anything depending on how you spin it you know if you don't inherently buy into what you see in the media there are at least 10 people who will that's the downside of our kind of culture so many people are very much willing to believe what they hear and not willing to actually just look into things themselves as he and Destro you know, even goes on to say that you know everyone is he says everyone else is crazy. He feels that people who wouldn't buy into it, they're the wrong ones. He tr he's truly drinking his own Kool-Aid, as he feels that Giren lacks imagination. And without that, without any real conviction or purpose, you know, people like Tomura Shigaraki will never move people's hearts. Meanwhile, Mr. Compress and, you know, Spinner, Twice, Dobby, they're all doing their best to fight off the masses, although I love the fact that while Spinner is getting very desperate and saying that, oh my god, they just keep coming, Dobby's just like, you haven't even f defeated one, just going to show you that Spinner might end up being the weakest link of the League of Villains, that he might actually die off in the course of this story arc. You know, we might end up seeing the death of Spinner because... You know, why else would we have him being the narrator of all this? Something about this just, it feels like this is his curtain call. Or at least there's the possibility of that. But then, Hyoko Hanabata comes out, you know, on one of those um, electoral van things where if you see in Japanese media where you have someone running for a head, a uh, position in office they'll have this speaker on one of these cars and they'll be announcing stuff and he comes out to announce to the people that Miss Curious has been defeated by him Toga and he tries to use this uses Curious's death as a way of bolstering the people because they had they have so many people have so much love for Miss Curious specifically and he and we have um Hanabata using this to his advantage to rally the people, tell them to take down the League of Villains and not let Miss Curious' sacrifice be in vain. And then we have this really wicked scene where like all of the people just come together in this wave of superpowered individuals, which must have been ridiculously hard to draw because you have this just crowd of people all swirling together to come in and attack um, you know the League of Villains and specifically Tomura Shigaraki because he is the face of the League of Villains 
Meanwhile, Tomura is just kind of out of it. Between everything that's happened with Gigantomachia and the battles that he's been going on here, you know, he starts to kind of hallucinate and just kind of flash back basically to a previous time in his life. You know, he says that it's just coming on because of his lack of sleep. You know, he's, he's starting to just see things and his body starting to just kind of, you know, freak out for the most part. And he has a flashback to his little sister, or older sister, I'm not actually sure, um, who shows him, you know, his little sister, um, our big sister, Hana Shimura. And she, you know, goes into their father's um, drawer, pulling out a picture of Nana Shimura, which goes to show that Shigaraki did at one point know that his grandmother was a pro hero at one point. You know, while Tomura has no real memories of this, you know, in a previous time he did, he was aware of this. But apparently, um, Tomura's dad, you know, considering, you know, ultimately Nana had to send him away in order to keep one for all for one from going after him to get to her, he wasn't quite happy with that because he would have preferred to be with his mother. You know, that's, that's a child reaction. But, you know, into his adult life, he, you know, still felt very bitter towards his mother fostering anti-hero sentiments which ends up to a certain degree being passed on to his son so you see that connection there it wasn't all all for one it was also nana's own son who fostered anti-hero sentiments to a certain degree because of his own you know feelings towards his mother and apparently at one point you know, it's, you know, Hannah kind of gives the implication that at one point, um, Tomura wanted to be a pro hero just like his grandmother, but that all changed when his quirk manifested, and, you know, honestly, I'm under the assumption, you know, this is my theory, that Dobby, I mean, not Dobby, um, Tomura's ability manifested in a way that was very benign, and it was all for one who accelerated his power because we saw when he, um, you know, in, um, we saw when all for one activated Magni's ability during the showdown between all for one and all might, he was able to use his ability to force um, Magni's abilities to activate. So I'm thinking all for one might have used Tomura Shigaraki's own ability in order to kill Tomura's family so that he could take Tomura under his wing in order to create this grand plan. Or maybe he even gave this ability to Tomura Shigaraki. Because I can't believe that, you know, All For One just happened upon Tomura right not long after his parents, you know, he accidentally killed his parents. I feel that that would be the ultimate villain move in finding out that All For One had a hand in why Tomura killed his family. That's my theory right there. And, you know, if that ends up being true, oof, you take that to the bank. But Tomura, you know, flips out of this flashback because ultimately he still has no, you know, context for any of the memories he's starting to experience because, you know, that feels like a completely separate life than his. And, you know, it, during this moment, he kind of powers up his own quirk. And with the wave of people coming at him, he just touches one person and tears right through him with his ability. But then we see that, that the decay ability that he has continues to just surge through all these other people within this area. And it's almost like everyone that that person was touching, the decay spreads to them and then the, the next person and the next person and the next person, turning this mass of people into a mass of decay, which is in Insane, although it's obvious that it takes a toll on Tomura himself as he starts to kind of puke and vomit and it's just like it just had this really adverse impact on his body you know it just was not agreeing with him to do this but we now see that Tomura can move on to this next stage and even Spinner's kind of taken off guard by this and once Dobby sees that, okay, cool, it looks like, you know, Tomura's really getting into just killing people, and now Dobby, the natural-born killer, to quote a movie, um, 
of the group is just ready to go in fully. Just really start murdering some people. Saying that he was never quite one for holding back. Only for this dude with massive ice hands to come crashing down in front of Dobby. Basically challenging him. And Dobby looks like him like, huh, ice. So it's just like, Horikoshi just continuing on on with those implications that he has some connection to the Todoroki family. Dobby has some connection, whether he's a cousin, a distant relative, or truly, you know, uh, Todoroki, Shoto Todoroki's big brother who seems to have disappeared for some reason. You know, enough has happened to Dobby you know, the patchwork that is his skin, enough has happened there to the point where I at least can believe there's a possibility that his family might not recognize him, but it just feels weird that no one would recognize him. If he is related to, you know, Endeavor, Todoroki, all of them, something about that seems off, but at the same time, Todoroki was always pulled away from his family. Endeavor, always ignoring the rest of his family, so there's the possibility there as well. It just raises so many questions. But that's where our chapter comes to an end. Tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. How did you feel about Himika Toga and her showdown with Miss Curious? Do you think, you know, I don't think Toga will die, but you know, how badly injured was she during the whole of this? Will she, is she completely out of the game or will she actually have her show up later down the line in this story arc to have a big impact moment? And what of, you know, um, the fact that we now know um, um, uh, Tomura Shigaraki or Tenko Shimura's little sister. Do you think there's a possibility she survived as well? Because a lot of the hands that he wears that are said to be from his family, it's just like we don't know how many members he had in his family. You know, there's only so many hands that he has around his body. You know, he have the two that he has on his head, that's one person. Then the ones he has on his shoulders, that's another. The ones he has around his neck. Then the ones, you know, you know, we have at least a set of, you know, six hands. So that's in total one, two, three, four, five, six people. So who are all these hands belonging to? You know, it's just like, how big of a family was this? And not to mention, none of them seem like little kid hands. So I'm really kind of questioning just whose hands are these? I'm really curious about this because it doesn't seem quite right to me. The, the amount of hands, it just does not seem quite right. Something just feels a little bit off of that, about that hand count. You know, that I, because all for one has to be lying about something in regards to Tomura's past. Because we would have seen the full thing. He would have had full knowledge about his past if it wasn't an important plot point. So all for one had to have had some true part to play in Tomura's family dying. And what do you think about Dobby confronting this ice themed person? Will we ultimately get some segue into his relationship with the Todoroki family? Will Horikoshi finally go into it? Because everyone else is getting these kind of flashbacks and understandings. And Dobby's the only one who um, Gran Torino didn't say the full name of. That's the thing. During the um, saving um, Bakugo little situation... Dobby was the only one who no one knows his name. No one knows who the hell Dobby is. And that's the biggest mystery going on here. And what do you think about Tomura's new quirk unlocking ability where he has this kind of area of effect decay wave he can send out? You know, I ultimately believe that it has to be a directional thing though because you know it only destroyed that certain area where that crowd was and went no further so there has to be a you know greater secret to how Tomura is able to apply that quirk here 
but that's my whole thoughts. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. We are feelings and where you think this is going. Um, tell me how you felt feel about this villain saga, where it's going, how this will end, and whether or not anyone from the Superhuman Liberation Army will actually survive. And if you liked this video, feel free to leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike and tell me what I did wrong in the comment section below so I might better myself for future videos. And how about subscribing and hitting the bell icon? That way you never miss another My Hero Academia chapter review. And if you want to find me on social media, just Google Do's Diz Did. I am everywhere, for better or for worse. And... Until the next video, just remember to always watch out for the decay surrounding you. Bye bye